everybody, thanks for all of your comments on my record player stand. That thing, I think it turned out pretty awesome with the disco light in there and everything. We've been playing records at dinner every night. It's been a lot of fun. You know, the sound quality isn't that great. I mean, it's not as good as a stereo. I mean, I guess I could hook it up to some speakers or even use the Bluetooth. I can't get the Bluetooth connect, but you know, that's kind of the nature of Bluetooth. It's always, what is the deal with Bluetooth? But I kind of realized that I don't really want a good quality sound with that record player. It is what it is. It's that retro sound and I kind of like all the crackling and the tinny sound and yeah, there's not a lot of bass. It doesn't have a subwoofer, but it just adds to the charm. I have an idea for my next project. <laughs> it's gonna involve cats. What do you think of something like this? Catification. That's what Jackson Galaxy calls it. Quick update on the stickers. I've got them all mailed out. I had to do them in a couple of batches because I ran out of stickers and I had to get some more. So the first round of stickers went out a few weeks ago. I think most of you already got those. And then a lot of the international ones came in. So I got all of those sent out today. And I got a lot of stickers left. So if you want one, just send me a self, self, self addressed stamped envelope. There's uh, my address is in the description of this video. Again, you don't have to send me a note or anything. Just send me an envelope and I'll send you out a sticker. But I do want to thank all of you who have sent me so many nice notes. It's really, we've got this system we work out of doing these. My wife will sit down, my wife and I will sit down on like a Sunday. We did this yesterday. We'll sit down at the table and she'll open them all and then she reads all of the letters and then hands me anything that's in there and then gives me the envelope and then I put the sticker in there and we have, we have this system. And I'm sorry I couldn't respond to everybody but just know that I do read all of those notes and it's, it's really heartwarming to, to get that kind of response. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the stickers and cards and things that you've been sending me. It's been pretty awesome. Thanks a lot. But I did get a couple of packages and this one is Especially. Well, this one actually wasn't for me. It was for Cobra and Bubbles. <laughs> this came from Sylvester, Nikki, Lizzie, Cat, and Fluffs. That's a lot of cats. And Dave Smith. So thank you, Dave. And you know what he sent for the cats or what the cats sent for Cobra and Bubbles? Look, kitty treats. <laughs> This is gonna help with their training. Treat, click, treat, click. And Dave, thanks for the workout t-shirt built like a Mack truck. That's me, someday. Oh, and check this out. Okay, you know I've got the 14,000 things to be happy about that was sent to me last month, and that one's really cool. We've been having a lot of fun with that, but now, look what this one is. It's the Book of Awesome. And this is very similar to 14,000 things to be happy about, except that it has uh, a little bit of a, a blurb about each thing, kind of describing it in a little bit more detail, ra rather than just the random explosion of words. And anyways, this book was sent to me by Neil Hammersmith. By the way, Hammersmith is just kind of an awesome name. Things that are awesome. That one good pen that never gets lost. Finally figuring out how your hotel shower works. That's funny, because I actually came up with a term for that a number of years ago, and I forget what I called that, shower, I forget. If anybody remembers that, I might have mentioned it on my old Mere Minute show, but yeah, it's when you, you go into a hotel and it seems like every shower is just weird. They always have like, oh, turn this, pull this, and then maybe you'll get water. The smell of crayons, <laughs> definitely. But you know, I'd like to one up that too, is the smell of Play-Doh. I love the smell of Play-Doh. When I smell Play-Doh, I just want to eat it. Other things I like the smell of, some weird things. I like the smell of gasoline. Don't know why. I kind of like the smell of lacquer. I like the smell of a new magazine and a lot of books too. I just like to smell books. Oh, and hotel sheets. When you get into a hotel and you get in there, those sheets have a certain smell to them. I don't know what it is. I probably don't want to know what it is, if you know what I mean. And I think you do. That was my Joe Bob Briggs impression. In case you didn't know, Joe Bob Briggs does The Last Drive-In. Of course, he did Monster Vision and these shows a long time ago, and now he does this weekly show on Shudder. There's probably only a couple weeks left of this season, but I just love it. It's my favorite show on TV. And all he does is just is show old and some new movies, horror movies, and then he cuts into them and talks about it. It's a horror host. These used to be a thing. Elvira used to do a show years ago like that. Remember there used to be like dinner and a movie. There would be a lot of these things where you'd have hosts and they would talk about the movie along the way. It was a fun way to watch. It's almost like a communal way of, of watching a movie. When you're, especially when you're stuck at home. Hey, you know, we're almost at the middle part of the year. Do you wanna, you wanna know what my favorite movies are of the year so far? Well, I can just, I can just hear the clicks right now, people clicking away from this video. <laughs> I thought this was a woodworking channel. 
Yeah, okay, I guess it is a woodworking chair. I don't know what we could do before I get into those movies. I'm still gonna show you my favorite movies of the year so far. Let's do, let's do the ABCs of woodworking. We're up to B. It's the ABCs of woodworking. B is for box joint. A box joint is one of the simpler, sort of complex joints that you could make. In fact, you can make a jig really simply and cut them out on your table. So I've got a separate video on that. I'll link to it in the description. There's a couple advantages to using box joints. One, they're super strong because there's so much surface area for that glue to bond those pieces together. And the second reason to use them is that they just really look cool. So if you're getting tired of making rabbits and dados and you wanna step up your game a little bit, try making some box joints. They're not that difficult. Difficult. The biggest question is what's the difference between a box joint and a finger joint? In my mind, those two terms are interchangeable, whether it's a box joint or a finger joint. However, there are some people who contend that finger joints are tapered, and you might see those more often joining longer boards together. By the way, this is actually my third attempt at making an ABCs of woodworking series. The first one I did, I totally forgot about. A viewer left a comment and reminded me that I did the ABCs of woodworking as a hoedown. Poplar, pine, and purple, hard, and ply would start with P. Q is when I question how much of that cost me. <laughs> Oh, I'll include a link for that too if you want to watch something kind of cringy. It was a long time ago. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my favorite movies of the year. I keep lists of everything I watch on Internet Movie Database. First of all, it was a film that was just released this past weekend. In fact, I rented it and I watched it twice. I liked it so much and that's Becky. It's uh, I guess you'd call it a revenge film. It's a lot of action, a lot of gore. It's got a 13 year old girl that just totally kicks ass. It's such a satisfying film to watch and it's got this great ending that just, I hope there's a sequel. Okay, the next one, hands down, no questions asked, you have to see The Velocipaster. It took a while for this one to kind of get a mass release, but Amazon Prime picked it up and then it's just snowballed. Super, super low budget film that just is, I think it's hilarious. After losing his parents, a priest travels to China where he inherits a mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. At first, horrified by this new power, a hooker convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. If you like sci-fi films, check out The Vast of Night. This one is, it was shot for like $700,000. It takes place in the 50s with maybe some UFO sightings in New Mexico. Watch it and pay close attention to the cinematography and the acting. The dialogue is just so snappy, I love it. In contention for my favorite film of the year so far would be Swallow. It's about this woman who has this condition called pica, which kind of compels her to eat objects, dirt, marbles, lots more. It's not a horror movie, it's actually kind of a really sad drama with really good acting. I just love the story and I love the way this was shot. I've got two films by Joe Bagos, one of my favorite up and coming directors, Bliss and VFW. Joe Bagos has this relentless style, tons of action, crazy camera movement, colors, and at the opposite end of that spectrum, I really enjoyed Gretel and Hansel. It's sort of a slow burn, so if you're not into that kind of film, you might not like this. It's more more about the atmosphere and the mood it creates. Oz Perkins is also one of my favorite newish directors. The last film he directed was A Black Coat's Daughter, which also had this same kind of unsettling feel. And finally, I wanna recommend The Lodge and Horse Girl. The Lodge is more of a kind of a, also an atmospheric horror film with some really interesting twists. And Horse Girl is more of a psychological drama, I guess. Well, I guess that'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.